Hey everybody, I hope you all are doing well and welcome back to Whiskey Wanders. And today we are back at two different total wines, uh, one in Valencia and one in Glendale, both cities kind of outside of Los Angeles proper. And this time around, we ended up going on the day of their grand openings, but smartly prior to the party to see what kinds of special bottles they had on hand for the grand openings, you know, before the crowds get there. So things like allocated Lagavulin scotches, uh, hard to find Irish whiskeys from the Spots collections, Red Spot 15, and a unique bourbon, a limited release out from Woodford Reserve from their master's collection, and really so much more. Now, before we get to the video, if you like these videos, if you like the wanders, if you like the hauls, the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, and we have a lot, don't forget to like and subscribe because it really does help the channel to grow and we are super thankful for that. But also you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays and you know, sometimes in between. All right now, let's get down to the video. All right, so while we are waiting for the WandaVision to get warmed up and <laughs> Waiting for me to get warmed up. Uh, let's enjoy something here on our whiskey check today. Uh, now we're going to do in, you know what? Something from the Utahns. Uh, this Midwinter's Night's Dram. Yeah. <laughs> let's see if we can get a pop on this. Let's get a pop. No. Hmm. It's fair to Midland. <laughs> get a little bit of juice. Oh, yeah. And to whiskey. Because honestly, let's face it, you can never really drink too much of it. You can only just drink it too fast. Cheers. Oh, so midwintery. Mm. All right, so first up for today is a bottle that actually they refused to sell to us, which is strange for a place that sells whiskey. But I guess it wasn't in their system yet or uh, something like that. It was their first day uh, being their grand opening, so <laughs> cut them a little bit of slack. But at least I did get a chance to see it on the shelf, which is this Woodford Masters Collection Historic barrel proof. So over the last couple of years, in fact, the last 18 years, on a yearly basis, Woodford Reserve has released various bottles under their master collection line. Uh, and they're supposed to be sort of like a step up in allocation and profile and palette, uh, even maybe a little bit in uniqueness from their standard Woodford Reserve. And it seems like there's really kind of two different categories in this master's collection. Uh, first is the ones that are barrel proofs that are super high. So they're geared towards like the fire breathers of the world. So something like uh, this 118.4 proof uh, Woodford master's collection, batch proof. Uh, or also we have uh, the 119 as well. And I'm waiting for that 124 to come out. Yeah. And these typically tend to be in the uh, 118 to 124 proof range. But then there are these ones that are really gonna be more focused on more sort of like quirky whiskey. <laughs> like last year's Woodford Reserve was like a five malt stout mash that they use mashes and things from uh, from different beers, like stouts and things like that. So it's a little bit more unique. But this one, uh, this year specifically, uh, which we did not get to buy, um, is uh, a bit of a change in direction from all of that because it is supposed to be a whiskey that is hearkening back to sort of old timey whiskey. It does have the standard Woodford Reserve mash bill at 72% corn, 18% rye, and 10% malted barley. But the catch is going to be in the name because it is historic barrel entry in reference to a more traditional practice of having whiskey proofed at 100 when it goes into the barrel, but not exactly necessarily at 100 when it comes out. So in essence, I think what they're trying to do is make a Woodford Reserve that had it been made in the early 20th century, this is what it would taste like. Now, the price that we see here at the Total Wine, which is going to be the mid-range for this bottle, and that's pretty typical for Total Wine, because um, it has been seen at Costco for as low as $99.99, or, you know, on the high end at BevMo for $139.99. This means that if we had purchased it here at the Total Wine, we would have uh, overpaid over the Costco price by about $30 or 23.08%, but we couldn't, so, yeah. <laughs> Not that I'm buttered about it. As I mentioned, the proof on the Woodford Master Collection is proofed at 100 proof, 50% ABV, when it goes into the barrel. Uh, but of course, the angels take their shares, like the tax man, uh, which leaves it at 45.2% uh, or 90.4 proof, which to me is enough of a drop off, really, to take a lot of that shine off the bottle. And, you know, not in a good way. <laughs> Tasting notes on this mention flavors like oatmeal, raisin, cinnamon and a fair amount of rye and specifically uh, one taster did note the fact that it tastes kind of only sort of really somewhat an improvement over the standard Woodford Reserve so <laughs> yeah 
The scores that I could find on it, as far as taste scores on average, came out to 86 points out of 100, which is honestly better than I thought it would do. Um, but for us, it's gonna be a pass. One, because yes, they wouldn't let us buy it. And two, uh, because I, I think I would rather save my whiskey money for when Woodford brings out their next batch proof, that master's collection, like I said before, at 124 proof. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be nice. That's what, I, that's what I'm talking about, a little bit of Kentucky rocket fuel. So yeah, that is the Woodford Reserve master's collection historic barrel, and it's gonna be a pass. Now, next up is a very interesting, at least to me, a limited release from the notoriously worldwide alcoholic corporate overlord, uh, at least for scotch, the Agio, uh, which is going to be this Lagavulin 12, the 2022 edition. Now, every year, Diageo comes out with a limited release set of whiskeys uh, of their lineup. And they usually come with some really cool, like colorful silos. Uh, that uh, like this one, for example, and have some sort of kind of fictitious story that vaguely relates to, you know, the story and the tale and to the whiskey and they make some sort of very thin connection. Um, so it's all a little bit hokey, but what really does matter is the juice inside. And so far, uh, each time we've tried it have been pretty great. We have the 2021 version, uh, which has a lion on the front, or as it is affectionately known as the baby lion, <laughs> as you can see, because it has a lion on there, but also this year they had a 26-year-old Lagavulin, which was the daddy lion. So that is uh, 2021. This one is 2022. And the 2022 one has a phoenix on the front. Um, but again, what is great about this is that they are sort of unique Lagavulins because they have a much, much, much higher ABV than the standard 16, which you can see here. Uh, because the 16 only has an ABV of 43%, which I totally understand why they do it. Like I get that there's nuance and balance and I think that it's perfectly balanced at 43%, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't want one <laughs> that is much, much higher and potentially much, much younger. Primarily because what you can taste in the younger one, in the younger Lagavulin, is going to be the fact that it is younger. You get a, a more of a, what we'll call a spryness to it and a lot hotterness to it because the ABV is higher even if you will, a bit of a prequel to the 16. So really, this is a great way to get a better understanding of Lagavulin as a corpus, as a whole, right? And get a, a more well-rounded understanding of Lagavulin so that when you do come back to the 16, you actually have a new perspective on it and enjoy it all the more. And of course, if you love Lagavulin, you're gonna want to kind of spread it out and try some versions of Lagavulin at younger ages and at older ages and at higher and lower ABVs. So again, you get that full spectrum. Now, obviously this one is aged 12 years old. It is composed of a simple but delicious mash bill of 100% malted barley, and it is aged in ex bourbon cast, but you really can see that that youth has taken out a lot of the color from it. You know, those extra couple four years make a big difference. Now the total wine, uh, you can see that the cost on the Lagavulin 12 is at $149.99, which again is gonna be at that mid-range level for the scotch. Uh, if you had gotten at Costco, uh, you know, you could probably catch it around $129 or, or at BevMo at $159.99 on the high end side. So that means that if we had purchased one at Total Wine, which we did not, but if we had, um, then we would have overpaid the Costco amount, the, the lowest cost, by $20 or 13.33%, which is still not really that bad. Now, the two most notable things on <laughs> this Lagavulin is one going to be the ABV and two going to be the ages. Uh, first, on the ABV, you can see the ABV on the Lagavulin is at 57.3%, uh, which is <laughs> quite hefty in comparison to the 43% on the standard Lagavulin 16, which to me is sort of like one of the things that I always wanted to try, which is a Lagavulin that is on the upper scale of the ABV, because I understand why they would do it at the 43% on this one. It totally makes sense on the 16. You know, it's a nice balance. It keeps everything in order. It's a perfect ABV for it. All that's good. But still, you know, <laughs> having a bit more fire added to it, I think would always be nice. And this is a perfect way to do that. Now, the taste notes I could find on the Lagavulin 12 mention things like vegetation and peat and healthy char with youthful timber. So I'm guessing kind of like when you walk around the uh, lumber section at Home Depot or maybe Lowe's or Ace, if anyone, <laughs> I don't know if anyone goes to Ace, uh, or, or lumber yard, okay, in general, uh, as well as uh, damp earth and lemon zest, which all sound exuberantly good to me. <laughs> So the review scores I could find on it are quite good at 88 points out of 100. So I am glad that we have this one uh, on hand. And even at uh, Total Wine for $149.99 for Lagavulin lovers and members of the Pete mob, you know, like myself, 
I think uh, it's still a good enough price to get it. So for this one, uh, this one is going to be a buy, and we would have gotten it if we had not already had this one from overseas. So uh, Lack of Bone 12, it's going to be a buy. All right, so last up for today, it's going to be a whiskey from the Irish side of the whiskey family, <laughs> which is this Red Spot 15. And uh, the Red Spot 15 uh, is one of those whiskeys that just kind of pops up here and there and almost always, always, always disappears just as quick. Um, it is the top end of the standard spots line from one of the oldest whiskey houses in Ireland, uh, Mitchell & Sons, uh, which you can see right there. They're quite proud of it. <laughs> uh, with the green spot, uh, I think we have a green spot. With the, with the green spot here being at the 10 years, uh, the yellow spot being at 12 years, and then the red spot being at the top of the line at 15. And with the exception of a couple specialty bottles, the blue spot and the gold spot, um, this one is going to be the top of the heap. It is distilled by Middleton and is made up of a mash bill of 100% malted and unmalted barley. And it is aged in ex-bourbon X Sherry and X Marcella wine cast, which gives it that very distinctive red hue to it. Oh, you know what? <laughs> I wonder if the red spot is related to the uh, red color in the whiskey. <sighs> wow, it's just like <laughs> mind blown if that is the case. Now, obviously, uh, it is aged 15 years old. It is produced without any filtering, so it's uh, non filtered, I guess, non chill filtered <laughs> is what I mean by that. And the price that we see it here at Total Wine is at $169.99, which is undoubtedly a pretty penny for an Irish whiskey. But as it is supposed to be not only a step up from the green spot and the uh, yellow spot and presumably the blue spot uh, and even the gold spot, <laughs> it's supposed to be the pinnacle of Middleton's standard line that I imagine, you know, it's probably well worth it. We haven't tried it yet. Again, Total Wine does have it at the mid-range uh, on the price-wise uh, because you can find it at Costco if you can find it, and <laughs> that is a big if, uh, for $155.99 uh, or even at BevMo occasionally at $179.99. So uh, if we had picked it up here at Total Wine, uh, we would have uh, overpaid the Costco amount by about $14 or that comes out to $8. 0.24%. Again, not too bad. The ABV on the red spot is not overly impressive, uh, which it does not need to be, especially when you have the flavor like it probably does, uh, at 46%, as you can see right there, which I think is going to be a great ABV if you want to kind of emphasize and highlight the whiskey flavors and not overemphasize the alcoholiness. Uh, the tasting notes on it mention things like dried red berries, baking spices, oak, cake frosting with a hint of metallic and plantain, which all sounds quite good. And the review scores that I could find on it are at 87 points out of 100, which is definitely well above the average. So that's still pretty good. And, uh, you know, I've been saving this one to actually open up and try uh, when we do something special. But looking at the reviews on this, man, we're really going to have to try to expedite uh, a tasting or a review on this one. Yeah, try to do this one sooner than later. So on the red spot, I still think it would end up being a buy at the total wine price. Um, but really, you know, it is going to be at the very tippy top of my purchasing envelope for this bottle. All right, so that's it for today's Whiskey Wanders at uh, two Total Wines, uh, one of them at Valencia and one of them at Glendale, both of which were doing their grand openings. And I really hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, and if you did, if you like these videos, if you like the Wanders, if you like the hauls, if you like the reviews, the unbottlings, the unboxings, and really <laughs> all the amazing stuff we got cooking up for you, we have tons of amazing stuff cooking up for you, don't forget to like and subscribe because it does really help the channel to grow and we are so, so thankful for that. But also, it is good for your whiskey mojo. I like to think it pleases the whiskey gods. And you get updates when our newest videos come out on Sundays, sometimes in between. All right, now, just remember, if you do find a whiskey that you love, just buy it. Because if you don't, somebody else most definitely will. And in this case, it might even be me. All right, everybody, have a great rest of your week. I'm out, and adios.